Ever heard the one about Putin being scared of the tank that whistles? Okay, it's not exactly the whistling that's got him worried, but it sure adds a touch of comedy to what we're here to talk about today. Stick around, because we're about to dive into some of the coolest and most impressive pieces of US firepower ever made. And don't worry, we'll get to the whistling. In a surprise turn of events in January 2024, near Avdivka, Donetsk Oblast in Ukraine, a pair of American M2 Bradley fighting vehicles, operating under Ukraine's 47th Mechanized Brigade, went head-to-head -head with the Russian T-90M main battle tank and came out on top. Despite the odds favoring the more heavily armored Russian tank, the Bradleys demonstrated exceptional combat skill. Captured by drone footage, this encounter saw the T-90M firing and missing, while the Bradleys swiftly responded. Maneuvering with agility, one Bradley engaged with its 25mm cannon on the move while the other flanked, delivering a barrage of fire that severely damaged the T-90M, rendering it inoperable. An armed drone delivered the final blow, although the Russian crew managed to escape. This engagement not only showcased the Bradley's capability in a surprising victory over the Russian tank, but also sparks a fascinating discussion. Could the M2 Bradley rival Russia's armored titans? Let's take a look at the Bradley and how Ukraine has used it to try and find an answer to that question. But before we get to that, we're pretty sure you'll get a kick out of hearing how the Bradley transformed from its roots in the Vietnam War into a dual threat on the modern battlefield. Buckle up. Born from the rugged lineage of the M113 used in the swamps of Vietnam, the Bradley has evolved into two formidable variants, the battle-ready M2 and the swift, recon-focused M3. The M2 is mostly built for combat, while the M3 is a specialized reconnaissance vehicle that is slightly faster and comes with a crew of three, plus two passengers, compared to the M26. Both versions carry the same weapons. Both are designed to carry out amphibious operations if necessary. Both also have the cross-country mobility to keep up with the M1 Abrams main battle tank. But what sparked the creation of this versatile warrior? Enter the Bradley Fighting Vehicle, a product of necessity, innovation, and a nod to a military legend, General Omar Bradley. Conceived by BAE Systems and joining the US Army's ranks in 1981, the Bradley was America's answer to new Soviet armored personnel carriers such as the BMP-1, which combined features of an APC with the firepower of a light tank. In contrast, the United States did not have a vehicle that could carry its troops to hotspots and provide good fire support at the same time. Facing the battlefield's evolving demands, especially witnessing Egypt and Syria's initial success in the Yom Kippur War of 1973, the United States sought an innovative solution to match the prowess of Soviet armor, leading to the birth of the Bradley Fighting Vehicle. This move was a game-changer, positioning America to leap ahead in armored warfare capabilities. Armed to the teeth, the Bradley boasts a 25mm Bushmaster chain gun, capable of unleashing devastation with armor-piercing and high-explosive rounds. Supplementing this firepower are a 7.62mm machine gun and Tau anti-tank missiles, making it a formidable opponent against armor at distances up to 2.3 miles. Not just a platform for weaponry, the Bradley serves as a mobile bunker for infantry, equipped for battle with interior-mounted rifles. Speeding across the battlefield at over 40 miles per hour and with a 300-mile range, it's a symbol of tactical flexibility and might. Despite its revolutionary design, the Bradley initially faced criticism. Why? What are the specific vulnerabilities that sparked such debate? And how did this armored vehicle evolve in response to these early challenges? When it started to enter service, critics accused the Bradley of having an awkward place in an army. They thought it would be too vulnerable against anti-tank rounds to be of much use, and yet still lack the firepower to be a force to be reckoned with against enemy tanks. For example, during live fire testing in 1985, the Bradley proved unable to withstand direct impacts from anti-tank rounds. The incoming munitions pierced its armor and exploded its fuel and ammunition magazines. Critics believed it would be vulnerable not just to rounds from incoming tanks, but to common man-portable anti-tank weapons such as rocket-propelled grenades. However, the Bradley silenced its critics with its performance in the Gulf War in 1991. The M2's ability to keep up with the Abrams while carrying six infantrymen proved to be a useful component in combined arms operations. Additionally, the Bradley's Tau missiles and 25mm cannons showed themselves more than a match for the Soviet T-72 tanks the Iraqi army was using. Army staff credited the vehicle with scores of kills against such tanks during the conflict, although the true numbers are hard to come by. 
One of the most famous such engagements came at the Battle of 73 Easting on February 26, when an M2 Bradley under the command of Staff Sergeant David Lawrence used a tube-launched anti-tank TAU missile to destroy an Iraqi T-72 tank. The tank's turret blew off its hull in a jack-in-the-box explosion. In total, three Bradleys destroyed four T-72s that day, according to the account of former U.S. Army Lieutenant General H.R. McMaster, who later served as National Security Advisor in the Trump administration and was a captain on that day. According to a Government Accountability Office report on the Bradleys' performance in Desert Storm, the vehicle's crew praised its performance in mobility, lethality, and even the survivability, which had been an object of controversy before. In short, it kind of flipped the script on those early doubts about its toughness. Fast forward, and the Bradley still remains a steadfast component of the US Army's arsenal, despite a few tries at finding something new to take its place. The most recent failure came with the optionally manned fighting vehicle concept. However, this program ended in 2022, meaning that the Bradley is set to stay in America's arsenal for at least another decade. In January 2023, the United States said it would be sending 50 Bradleys to Ukraine, along with 500 Tau missiles and 250,000 rounds of 25mm ammunition. Ukraine was in need of more armor at the time, and experts hoped that the Bradleys would prove as effective as they had against the Iraqi tanks in the Gulf War. After all, the Russians were using the same exact models. American experts also hoped the Bradley would provide safer movement to Ukrainian troops in high-risk areas. The Ukrainians would be getting the second, newest variant of the M2 Bradley, known as the M2A3. This version has a digital command and control system for use of its weapons, increased situational awareness, better network connectivity, better sensors to see over longer distances at night, and explosive reactive armor to better protect it from anti-vehicle rounds, which the initial version of the Bradley did not have. In total, the United States has sent 190 Bradleys to Ukraine since the war began two years ago. The first Bradleys arrived in Ukraine in April 2023. These vehicles are exclusively operated by Ukraine's 47th Mechanized Brigade. According to Ed Arnold, a researcher at the Royal United Services Institute, Ukraine's decision to concentrate the Bradley in the hands of one unit has made the vehicle more effective overall, as the 47th can use it to its fullest advantages, rather than dispersing its attributes across different units. Ukrainian operators have been full of praise for the vehicle's performance. One Ukrainian Bradley commander, Serhii Gavriluk, said it scares them, the Russians. When we hear their radio and they hear that the Bradley's coming, they start to run away. Ukrainian forces in Avdivka have credited them with helping them hold the line. Another Bradley commander interviewed by CNN in January 2024, who went by the codename Barbie, credited the vehicles with preserving Ukraine's northern flank there. Without them, he said, it would have been lost. They were especially keen on the Bradley's night-fighting abilities, and reaffirmed Gavrilik's assertion that radio intercepts of Russian soldiers revealed that they were spooked whenever they understood that Bradleys were approaching them. Indeed, the Bradley's ability to fight at night is to the point that some Ukrainian crews have said they are more effective fighting then than during daytime. One soldier said of his Bradley, The shrapnel density is crazy. The firepower density is just insane. Target acquisition takes seconds, just seconds. At night, this machine is absolutely priceless, simply invaluable. You capture targets much faster, visibility is better than during the day. The soldier, however, did mention that the Bradley was comparatively lacking in range. Another soldier said the Bradley was like night and day compared to its Soviet-era counterparts. Unlike them, the Bradley was suitable for breakthroughs, more capable of undertaking defensive tasks, and better able to evacuate wounded troops. Designed as the ultimate counter to Soviet machinery like the BMP, the Bradley has indeed faced its arch-rival on modern battlegrounds. But how does this Cold War-era warrior stack up in today's conflicts? Enter the showdown of November 2023. It was during this time a drone captured footage of a Ukrainian Bradley fighting against a BMP-type vehicle in the outskirts of Stepova, one of the northern suburbs of Avdivka. The BMP had attempted to conceal itself in some woods, while the Bradley was less concealed. Nevertheless, it got the drop on the Russian vehicle and shot at it with armor-piercing incendiary rounds. After an initial salvo, the BMP tried to get away, but this exposed its sides with thinner armor. As it attempted to escape, the BMP ran into the blast radius of a 155mm DPICM cluster artillery shell, while still taking hits from the Bradley. The video cuts off from there, so the BMP's fate is not known for certain, but the footage revealed the Bradley's effectiveness against the vehicle it was designed to fight. 
The Bradley continued to show how effective it was against BMP-type vehicles in another engagement around Stapova, recorded in January 2024. In this fight, one Bradley destroyed three BMP-2 vehicles. The footage reveals the Ukrainian Bradley's main gun blasting through the BMP's hulls and wrecking their tracks. The attack stopped the Russian advance and prevented them from flanking the Ukrainian positions. It's in footage like this that we see why the Ukrainian forces have proclaimed the Bradley to be such an essential item in the defense of Avdivka. Russian forces have advanced there, but slowly and with heavy casualties. British intelligence sources claim that the Russians have taken some of their highest casualties in the war there. The town is seen as a key juncture for Russia to occupy the entire Donbass region. The Bradley's presence there is making this objective far more difficult for the Kremlin to carry out. The Bradley also proved itself in the 2023 Zaporizhia campaign, although with much less spectacular results than around Avdivka. In this theatre, the Bradley often found itself bogged down in Russian minefields and unable to effectively use its weapons. Nevertheless, the vehicle showed its worth early in the fighting when one of its class took a direct hit from a Russian Grad rocket. The vehicle survived, as did every person inside. In the Zaporizhia theatre, Ukraine's infantry praised the Bradley's durability, saying that they would not have been able to survive the same fire if they had been stationed inside Ukraine's previous Soviet-era carrier vehicles like the BMP. Ukrainian Bradley operators in Zaporizhia particularly praised the M2A3's ability to withstand mine blasts, a critically important quality in this theater, which the Russians have converted into the most heavily mined place in the world. With such qualities, the M2 played an important role in the capture of Robotyne on the road to Tokmak in August and September. This time, the Bradley's ability to move troops in and out of hotspots proved to be its most important feature. Fresh troops were safely sent in via the Bradley, while exhausted ones were safely rotated to the rear. The Bradleys also proved important for evacuating the civilians who had been living there under the Russian occupation. The Bradley also demonstrated its ability to outrun Russian artillery fire during these operations. At this time, Ukrainian troops showed reporters from CNN some of the direct hits from artillery that their Bradleys had taken, praising them for their resilience. However, they did say that the vehicle had a weakness in that it makes a distinct whistling sound which the enemy could hear from miles away. In similar scenarios, a Russian tank like the T-72 or T-90 might have been wiped out. Because of the way these tanks store their ammunition, they are vulnerable to having their entire magazines explode should they take a direct hit. This is not the case with the M2 Bradley, although its armor is much thinner. But this might not be the only reason why Ukrainian soldiers have such a high opinion of the Bradley. Instead, its design might be better suited for the modern battlefield than that of Russia's main battle tanks. Armored warfare has evolved on the battlefields of Ukraine. Direct tank versus tank combat has been rare there. The advent of more accurate real-time battlefield surveillance, especially with drones, means that tanks get into visual fighting range with enemy tanks far less frequently than they used to. Instead, destroying a tank in a modern peer or near-peer conflict comes down largely to the ability to spot it ahead of time and shoot at it from a long distance, whether through an artillery strike, with portable anti-tank weapons like the Javelin, or with drones. These trends have become more pronounced in Ukraine, where most of the engagements have occurred at the company or platoon level. Russia's fleet of tanks was not designed for this type of combat. Instead, tanks like the T-72 and T-90 were designed to operate at the core or divisional level in the Cold War, where they would overwhelm NATO contingents through mass and could be easily replaced because they were cheap. In fighting smaller-scale engagements against an enemy carrying different types of weapons, Russian tanks have struggled, which is partly why thousands of them have been destroyed. But the trends in Ukraine do not mean that armor is obsolete on the modern battlefield. Armor provides the kind of on-the-ground forward momentum that other arms cannot. It's ideal for storming enemy positions and providing fire support to assist infantry as it moves forward. The tank was first designed in World War I for precisely these kinds of tasks. The M2 Bradley is not a tank, but its lighter, nimbler frame makes it an ideal platform to provide close fire support for infantry, shuffle infantry to hotspots, protect infantry from attack, and help maintain forward momentum on the battlefield. It might also be better suited to the new realities of drone warfare than Russian tanks are. The Bradley's combination of speed, maneuverability, survivability, lethality, and its capacity to act as an important part of a combined arms setting has made it one of Ukraine's most valued weapons, at least according to the soldiers who have operated it or who have been supported by it. 
However, the Bradley does have limitations. It's not designed to engage in direct combat against an enemy tank, and it lacks the range of a main battle tank, meaning that it will have to get closer to its enemy to deliver its firepower. In the famous January 2024 engagement, the T-90 tank took over 20 rounds from the Bradley's 20mm cannon before it needed to be abandoned, and the Russian tank crew survived. Although the Bradley has the capacity to destroy enemy tanks, particularly with its Tau missiles, fighting them head-on is always a dangerous proposition. Indeed, one of the Bradleys in the duel at Stepova seems to have run out of armor-piercing ammunition during the fight. The Bradley's gunner said that, We fired all we could, at first with anti-armor, then we started having issues. Unfortunately for the Bradley's crew, the enemy T-90 was still in the mix, and if it had been able to get one shot on a Bradley with its 125mm gun, it likely would have been lights out for the Ukrainian vehicle, especially at such short range. Indeed, the Ukrainians had failed to penetrate the Russian tank's explosive reactive armor in the initial barrage, let alone the hundreds of millimeters of composite base armor underneath it, so the crew needed to switch to less effective anti-tank rounds like high-explosive 25mm shells. It was a dangerous gambit to say the least. However, in a microcosm of the war as a whole, the Ukrainians got creative in the face of their larger and more powerful enemy. Seeing that a direct attack had failed, the gunner said that he pivoted to targeting the enemy's optics, blinding them so he couldn't leave. That was when the T-90 began to spin out of control, resulting in its eventual meeting with the tree. The Bradley had proven itself in this fight, but also had proven its limitations. These limitations are seen in the losses that Ukraine has taken. According to the Oryx blog, Ukraine has lost 69 Bradley fighting vehicles as of February 15, 2024. 33 of these have been destroyed, an additional 24 have been damaged, 11 have been abandoned after taking damage, one of them was captured. Oryx only measures visually confirmed losses of equipment in the war, so the true number may be higher. The losses reflect how heavily Ukraine has come to rely on the Bradley in such a short time, but also the vehicle's limits. Russian soldiers have made them a high-priority target. The saga of the one Bradley confirmed to be captured is a good illustration of Russia's attitude towards this platform, though. Russia showed off the Bradley in a segment on state television on December 6. The vehicle was seen with explosive reactive armor panels on its front. The show's host also showed the Bradley's vast magazine of 25mm and 7.62mm ammunition, and even the instructions, written in English, on how to use it. Cameras panned to an expose of the bullet holes riddled in the Bradley's chassis, which presenters claimed came from the Ukrainian forces trying to destroy as much of the equipment in the vehicle as possible before they abandoned it. Perhaps tellingly, the dual tube for launching Tau missiles was not featured on the show. In reporting on this Russian television segment, the Warzone quoted an unnamed armor expert with intimate knowledge of the Bradley. He mentioned that because the vehicle is completely unclassified, he had no fears that the Russians would get their hands on any sensitive technologies. Because of this, it's easy to see the TV segment as an item of propaganda for the Kremlin. The television feature came around the same time as the reports of the Bradley's success in holding the northern flank at Avdivka began to circulate. Parading captured enemies for public consumption has been a tool of propaganda in warfare since ancient times. The more dangerous the enemy, the more its capture meant, and the greater the glory afforded to the capturer. In other words, the Bradley being something of a parade item for the Russians is a further confirmation of the effectiveness it has had against them in the fight in Ukraine. The Bradley may be a platform that is over 40 years old and whose concept is even older, but it's still proving itself an important component in modern combined arms operations. One thing is certain. Ukraine has used its individual Bradleys far more effectively than Russia has used its individual main battle tanks. What do you think about the Bradley and how the Ukrainians have used it? Will the US Army find an adequate replacement for it anytime soon? Don't forget to let us know in the comments. Now go and check out why Putin is terrified of new Abrams tanks arriving in Ukraine, or click this other video instead. Also, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more military analysis from military experts.